So hey guys, what's up? My name is T-Space, and welcome back to another episode of Back to School Sniping. So today I'm going to be talking about strafing, and given I'm talking about strafing, this video is probably going to be very short. Um, so, there are things that happen while you're playing Battlefield 4, whether you miss your shot, you can't get your shot off, or you're just stuck in a sticky situation. Strafing more or less can give you an extra second or so to decide what you can do, whether that is allowing yourself to bolt your bolt action, pull out your pistol, or just deciding to run away from the fight. Now, side strafing I use a lot. I'm not too sure if you guys have noticed it, but I do do it a lot in my gameplays and during my streams. And overall, it helps me in these situations. Uh, usually I, I strafe uh, with my pistol out when, I, you know, when I'm not able to pull off uh, my sniper shot, I pull out my pistol, and then I strafe back and forth. Now, in Battlefield 4, I find that there are about three main different strafes, or at least for me, I only use three different strafes. Uh, so the first one is pretty simple. It's more or less just moving side to side. This is just, I would deem it, the regular strafe, or the strafe. Now, strafing back and forth like this is very simple and simplistic, but more or less, when you do it, it actually becomes very, very hard to hit you. It's, it's actually really awkward how, how hard it is to hit you, especially when you are sniping against it. Uh, usually, I use this uh, side strafing technique against players that are either far away from me or that are um, in the direction that I want to peek at. So let's say I'm behind cover and I want to just side strafe out really quickly and then side strafe back into cover again. I'll peek out, shoot the guy, pop back in, and I'm completely safe. For the long range targets, the long range targets are more or less the easier ones, mainly because when you're moving back and forth in kind of a subtle way, where it's not too drastic that you're moving back and forth, but it's enough for them to recorrect their aim, this pisses these guys off like so much. I could just imagine how much it pisses them off. Uh, it's, it's really funny. Um, so when they go on tilt or they get mad, uh, they'll start missing their shots. They'll, they'll under aim or they'll over aim you. And overall, when you notice that they miss you, this is when you can actually shoot back. These shots should be really, really easy for you to get by now. The second side strafe that I use not too often compared to the other two, but more or less I still use it, is called the jumping strafe. Now the jumping strafe is a uh, is just how it sounds. You jump to strafe. Uh, whilst you're d doing a jump strafe, you want to be facing in, in the direction of where you want to go. So as you're running, you jump into cover, and that is what I consider a jump strafe. Um, I use this to get to cover when I'm you know in a sticky situation. If I'm out in the open and I want to get to cover faster, I jump into cover. On top of that. When you are jumping into cover, it allows you to become a harder target to hit instead of just you running into cover. There's a lot of times when I see people just running to cover and I can predict where their head's going to be before they even get behind cover. So as they cross my crosshairs, they're dead. Now, if they did the jumping strafe, if I was pre-aiming at that specific point where I think their head's gonna cross and they jump instead, I will probably hit them but not necessarily kill them. So that's what the jumping strafe does. It more or less allows you to, I guess, manipulate your hitbox. Now the last and final strafe that I use pretty constantly, mainly with my pistol that is, is the crouching strafe. Now the crouching strafe is kind of an addition uh, to the regular strafe. So like I said in the very beginning, a strafe is just moving back and forth. The crouch strafe is moving back and forth, but adding in the crouch function into the strafe. So as you're moving back and forth, you crouch up and down. So not are you only moving side to side, you are also moving up and down, which makes you an even harder target to hit. Now with that being explained, um, the way that you do a proper strafe should not be predictable. When you are trying to strafe in these si certain situations, you want to be kind of random. If you are too predictable, you're your opponent might catch on and overall strafing in that situation will be a hindrance to you because you don't know how to use it properly. You don't want to go left, right, left, right, left, right all the time. You want to kind of mix it up. Uh, I, I go by this kind of saying, if I confuse myself, then I confuse my enemy. If I don't know which buttons I'm actually clicking and I'm strafing in that kind of manner, it's so confusing that my that my opponent will probably not know how to predict where to aim. As he's trying to aim at me, he'll be all confused. Like, man, he's, I can't, I can't, I don't see a pattern. I can't hit this guy. And overall, this should give you enough time to, of course, either shoot back at him or run away, of course. 
Now for your homework, this is probably going to be the most painful set of homework that I'm going to, uh, I guess, initiate to you guys. Uh, and this is as such. You want to play one game. It doesn't really matter what game it is. Just play one game. And w before you even take a shot at someone, use one of the three side strafes that I talked about. Whether that be the regular side strafe, the jumping side strafe, which I highly doubt any of you would do, or the crouching side strafe. Um, so you have to do one one. It doesn't. You have to do all of them. Just do one. One of the three side strafes before you shoot your target. Uh, whether or not he's looking at you or not, it's more. I would prefer it to be if the guy is looking at you, then you can do the side strafe. Because if he's not looking at you, you're not really learning anything. You're just kind of looking like a dumbass moving back and forth at a target that's not even looking at you. So try to make it so that the player is looking at you first before you you know do this homework. Um, so, I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode of Back to School Sniping, but like always, my name is T-Space, and I will catch you guys later. Next week, I'm not really too sure if I can put out a new Back to School Sniping episode, but if I do, the next week's episode will be Sniper Confidence. So, I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode, and like, again, I said this already, I'll catch you guys later.